Hey, welcome back to Two Super Guys Trade Socks. I'm Dylan. And I'm Vinny. And today we're going to talk about something I've actually just learned about called super core inflation. Is it like the end of the world? Will the Marvel Universe collide with Jerome Powell and explode into nothingness? Maybe. We'll talk about it. Hmm. <laughs> Two Super Guys Trade Stocks. So, so this kind of concept just came to my attention from uh, Larry Summers' uh, talk. I don't know. You, you know who that is? I do. But more importantly, I will say you did just make a Marvel reference and then yeah. have Superman on the cover, which is DC. I'm just I'm just, I'm yeah. just throwing it out there. And, and, yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. I mean, frankly, Dylan definitely knows way more about superheroes than I do. But, you know. I'm, it's, it's I'm wearing a Captain America hat. <laughs> yeah. Just a little bit. <laughs> But so Larry Summers, former kind of uh, Treasury Secretary, you know, you may recognize his his name from if you pull out your wallet and look through some of your bills, you may have his name on some of those yeah, dollar bills. You know, he's kind of an interesting character. Okay. They did gave a meeting this weekend where he was talking about their interview, uh, talking about super core inflation and how, on a trailing three, six, nine, and twelve month perspective, it's actually still increasing. And that's what this category right here in like the purple background is. I mean, I'm sorry, the, the brown background is. We're going to talk about it a little bit more in a second here. But um, headline wise, this is this article with CNBC. The super core inflation shows the Fed has a real problem on its hands. Right? I mean, they're always looking for another way to, to fear monger a little bit. You know, this weekend or this week was a lot of talk about not just inflation, about the Iran Israel war developing, devolving into like a, uh, a regional conflict and involving all these like foreign powers. We've already kind of seen that happen, and it looks like it's on the downside, fortunately. So hopefully oil prices will come back. To be clear, it part. could get worse. There is there is that possibility. It, it could always get worse, all right? So what exactly is the super core inflation? It's a, So th this is coming from another article where they talked about provide some more nuanced view of the underlying pressures uh, by excluding volatile, volatile components such as food, energy, shelter, and rent costs. All right. So it's like core, but also then excluding housing costs, you know, where because food and energy are left out of core yeah. inflation. Measures. OK, so it's yeah. just the same thing, but no, no rent and shelter. no rent and housing. And it, the reason why it's kind of important is that if you remember, like we've talked about this probably a year ago, uh, Powell said that the, the sector that's hardest to control is like non housing services sector. Right. Remember mentioning that? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So this is effectively a measure of non housing services um kind of cost inflation okay all right. all right i don't know so are the numbers not good because that's not good uh no no they're definitely not it. um it, yeah it, it allows them to kind of eliminate these temporary fluctuations in specific sectors all right so this is the the super core portion these green bars here see pretty pretty beefy component of the overall inflation and as you've seen other components of inflation coming down in terms of the contribution like you know, we actually had goods go negative at one point uh, in the summer and fall of next of last year right like these orange bars that are down here that that's year over year decline in cost of goods you know that that's your refrigerator that's now two hundred dollars cheaper than it was a couple of years ago right right but You've seen this this green bar on this particular graph continuing to grow, uh, you know, month over month, just continuing to, to increase here. Um, they're actually the rate of right now is 4.8% year over year for that segment. That is the hardest to control, the most important one to get a, a control of. Uh, and we're seeing now you know, measure that's more than double what the Federal Reserve is looking for in terms of goal. Uh, inflation rates before they start to cool off on interest rates a little bit. So Larry Summers in this interview actually even called for the possibility of Fed having to raise rates even further oh, because okay. of this particular segment. Now, is he the only one calling for that? No, but you know it, it is interesting when the you know former Treasury Secretary, someone that's you know very educated in the this this arena, says something like that. It's certainly something you have to listen to. A large portion of this, Dylan and I actually talked about this before, um, car insurance premiums. Remember that? You did that video, and I, I also had to switch car insurance. I did, yeah. We did a video. Um, you know, it's funny. I feel like these are like our most important videos, and no one watches them. But essentially, yeah. uh, my house insurance went up 65% in one year, and my car was up 55 and mm -hmm. essentially car insurance companies and housing insurance companies make money by you not changing every two years, which seems yeah. weird because they say it's frowned upon, but I, 
I, I saved over 55% total by changing. Yeah. So my, my housing went up. I can't remember the exact percentage off the top of my head. I did not change this time. This is only going to be my third year with that particular company. Um, I will reevaluate and shop around next year. I did change my car insurance because they were asking for a 35% year over year increase. You want to know what the actual like, uh, you know, annual numbers for inflation for car insurance rates are right now? Yes. Yeah. So it's 2.6% month over month. Uh, but uh, on a yearly basis, so I got to come back. It was um, year over year. 22. 22%. Come on. Yeah. And 22%. that's just so absurd. Like that's just stealing money. That's not. They're just. Okay. I mean, they're getting so, record profits. I don't think it's inflation. Well, it's... I didn't look at uh, any individual like um, auto insurance companies to see what their profit margins look like now. Now, I can tell you that they are also experiencing rising costs. Um, this is one of the components there is Mitchell, right? So I actually worked in the auto sector for a point in time. Mitchell is the, the software provider that gives you like what's called a book time. It tells you how many, like, how much, how many hours you have to pay for a particular job. And, you know, they're talking about the increases in uh, prices of over 10% per year it, as far as the actual average bills for repairing vehicles. So vehicles got a lot more expensive to maintain. Uh, says the guy who spent like four hours yesterday digging under his dash trying to fix my my, my air conditioning um, and destroying my absolute hand. So I, I can't say that they don't deserve this 10% per year increase, um, but that's a that's a big number, big component feeding into it. Geico, I know from listening to Berkshire Hathaway talks, has had a, a um, uh, like basically an operating profit over the, the last like nine months at least of uh, 2023. I remember them, you know, Burke, uh, Warren Buffett mentioning that specifically uh, in one of his kind of press conferences there. The so I can't, but I can't speak to other insurance companies as far as their prices go. I would. They have had a lot of push up. This is part of the reason why you're seeing the, these costs to repair vehicle go up so much. This is the average hourly shop rate for vehicle repairs right now. Um, look, look at the spread: 173 per hour in California, 110 per hour in Mississippi. And this is kind of giving you a little like heat map here um, of the, the average hourly shop rates. I mean, back when I worked in a garage, it was like $75 an hour. So the shop rates are have gone pretty crazy as far as the, their prices go. Um, now, it's definitely part on. of it. I got a quick but, question. Yeah. Is that Shoot. price just labor or total cost to fix the car? That is just labor. That is per hour for the mechanics time. Damn. Yeah. Okay. That's so a lot. It, yeah. That's a huge increase. It's an interesting industry, uh, but like, you know, say that, say the job pays four hours, quote unquote, um, you know, that's four hours times the shop rate is what they charge you for that. Now the mechanic can get it done in 20 minutes if he's like, you know, that'd be really impressive um, and gets that whole four hours pay, or it could take him eight hours and he only still gets the four hours pay. It's a very interesting industry from that standpoint. Uh, so the faster, more efficient you are, the more money per hour you're actually making. Um, but you know, this right here is another chart showing that that super core inflation. Look at look at the component of it now. It is the only one that's still like standing up. Right, everything else has you know gone negative as far as the actual energy cost here for a little while. It, did, it has started to pop up slightly now that we're having this little increase in, in tension in the Middle East. Um, definitely driving up pumps pr pump prices a little bit. But overall, the only component that's been consistently you know a large portion of the inflation and it still has yet to respond is this super core inflation, which represents that non-housing services based sector. It's a problem. So it's definitely a problem. I do think that there's two aspects to this that is a little bit funky. One, we had done a video where we looked at companies with profit margins, not just total profit, and the profit margins were the best in history. So not just they're mm -hmm. making more money, they're bringing in a higher percentage of money ever, which is crazy, yeah. right? And there's multiple companies that were on that list that were yeah. insane. That would falsely elevate this. Two, I... I don't know if we can handle another rate hike. I, I, I know that they got to five and a half and everyone's like, all right, this was a good call because they were nervous about even going that high. Now yeah. unemployment is ticking up a little bit. You have a lot of, um, what is it? The fourth quarter, 2023 fourth quarter credit card delinquency rates just hit the highest they've mm -hmm. ever been since it's been tracked. And uh, I think it's 12 years now. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know if they could do another rate hike. We might just sit here for a longer period of time over yeah. another rate hike. I mean, it's possible. You're, but you're definitely going to see, like you know, the the temperament or expectation of rate uh, cuts is 
really swung the other way, right? At one point, we were expecting like as as many as five or six rate cuts this year, and then it was three. And they still say three based upon the SEP projections of the most recent quarter. But that SEP projections of the most recent quarter, I think, are, are, are a joke. Um, you know, if you remember back to like 2021, before they started this this tightening cycle, they saw like a, a peak Fed funds rate of like 2.7 percent. Yeah, <laughs> you know. It was not even close. We, we, double that they, they were way off in their s&p projections and i think they're way off in their s&p projections again and that we're not going <clears> to <throat> see uh rate cut maybe 25 basis points in the fourth quarter of this year december i think i think that's best case scenario at this point yeah okay that makes sense that's uh i i think we'll get one one to two rate cuts this year i i, I need more data points to see if this is going to go down I will yeah. say I'm not super convinced that the conflict with Israel and, and Iran, I know it seems okay right now. I'm not super convinced that that's going to not get worse. Yeah. Um, and that could definitely change things a lot regarding rate hikes, but we will have to see. All right. Absolutely. I mean, the, the worry thing is, like, so I try to find <laughs> a, a good chart of this because I wanted to show it, but like, like I said, Larry Summer said the, the trailing three months, six months, nine months, and 12 months. For this, this super kind of core inflation has all trended up, going the exactly wrong direction, and that's yeah. consistently. So, that's no uh, bueno. It's not no ideal. Bueno. No. All right, guys, let us know what you think. Catch you next one.